Coinbase at 332, right? That's below where it was trading in private markets. Help us out. What do you think it should be worth? Listen, Neil, it's, it's tough to, to put a number on something, but I would tell you one thing. Coinbase is a the first big institutional equity name in the crypto space. Uh, it will be part of everyone's portfolio because everyone now thinks if I'm not long crypto, I'm short it. And they need an allocation in equity portfolios. And so what's happening is a lot of the original investors and employees who had made lots of money on Coinbase and had their entire net worth basically tied up are selling, as they always do. And there's a turnover and it's being bought by institutions. That'll take a couple of weeks before we have the whole thing turned over and hit an equilibrium. And my gut feeling is at that point, the stock market, the stock will start climbing higher again. So um, is it expensive, you know, on a PE basis, on a price to, to, to growth basis? You, you tell me, but I will tell you one thing. If you think it's expensive, it's going to stay expensive because crypto is just starting. So how does this, you know, more than $65 billion in valuation make you think about your own plans to list in the U.S.? Listen, unfortunately, you know, we're under a strict guidelines that we're not allowed to talk about that. I can talk a lot about our company. Uh, we are bursting at the seams. We're, we're hitting on all cylinders right now. Uh, our trading business is up. Our direct investment business is up. We've hired 75 people in six months. We'll probably hire another 40 in the next four months. Uh, the quality of people coming into the crypto space is amazing. Young talent that is looking at tech and investment banking and saying, I want to move to crypto. Um, this is not a fintech business. Coinbase doesn't have a fintech business, nor do we, right? We have crypto ecosystem businesses. And it's hard to even know where the, the, the borders of that. You know, when they say, what's the TAM? What's the total addressable market? Well, four months ago, no one was thinking NFTs was going to explode like it did. Using the blockchain to transfer value, whether it's in digital gold and Bitcoin or smart contracts with with financial services in DeFi, or now IP art collectibles in NFTs, is just an exploding sector. You brought in uh, Michael Daffy from Goldman Sachs as chairman. What do you want him to do for Galaxy Digital? Listen, I wanted to send a really strong message to our investors, our employees, uh, our stock market investors, and our customers that we are a customer-focused merchant bank for the 21st century. Michael Daffy probably was the number one client guy on Wall Street over the last 20 years. His relationships with the biggest hedge fund managers, with the biggest real money managers, uh, institutional investors are the best, I think, in the, in the entire, on the entire street, right? He was chairman of global markets at Goldman Sachs. But really, I brought him because he understands how to deal with customers and knows all the customers. We're trying to migrate customers from traditional finance into this new world of crypto, blockchain, Bitcoin. And they often go on the same path. They start with Bitcoin, then they start learning a little more. They say, well, what is this Ethereum about? And that path is accelerating for so many of them. We want to be that bridge. And I think Davi's perfectly suited to help guide us there. Mike, even sophisticated investors find it hard to wrap their heads around this area of digital finance. Who do you compete with? That may make it easier to view the universe. Are you competing with a Coinbase or are you competing with a Goldman Sachs? Well, listen, right now we're not competing with Goldman Sachs or, or any of the big banks. We're actually collaborating with them, right? We did a partnership with Morgan Stanley. We hope to do partnerships with most of the banks. I think in three or four years we'll be competing with them. And so my message to my employees is we got to stay the smartest guys in the room. We got to keep learning. We got to keep innovating because they're coming. I tell you, we're also starting to compete with decentralized finance, with on-chain solutions to lots of these problems, right? In some ways, 15, 20 years from now, all banks like ours might be uh, anachronisms, uh, right? I say we're a bridge to the, to the new era. Mm -hmm. The new era might be a much more peer-to-peer -peer era. And so things don't happen overnight. And so our idea is to continue to innovate and try to stay one step ahead. 
you know, you know better than anyone, because you were an early mover in this space, that the proof of concept and the valuation are not the same thing. Uh, so let's focus on the valuation. You mentioned NFTs. I think that's an excellent place to focus, because while, of course, the blockchain part of that has great value, and as you say, may it replace every intermediary in future, uh, it doesn't mean that the trading value of the current NFTs makes any sense at all. As you go to launch a Galaxy ETF, do you worry about valuations? Well, listen, so I think Bitcoin has had its cycle, right? We had a crash in 2017, and now we're in on a massive adoption cycle. So I think, no, Bitcoin, I think, is going higher. I think the same thing with Ethereum, right? Ethereum went from 1300 to, like, 80. It's now come all the way back to 23, 2400. Uh, the gas fees, the, 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 the amount you need to spend to use it is going lower and lower and lower. So use case is going higher and higher and higher. All NFTs or the bulk of NFTs are being built on Ethereum. The bulk of central bank issued digital currencies or stable coins, stable coins are going on Ethereum. Um, and a lot of the DeFi projects are being built on Ethereum. And so Ethereum is going to get valued like a network. The more people that use that network, the higher the price is going to go. In the NFT space, yeah, we had some crazy prices. I don't think someone else is going to pay $69 million for a Beeple. Um, that money is coming from this crypto economy, right? It wasn't a classic art bar buyer who bid $69 million. It was two really wealthy crypto people. But you have to understand now, there's over $2 trillion of wealth in crypto that didn't exist 10 years ago. Didn't exist really three years ago. And so that's real money. And so there's new consumers that are spending things that matter to them. And so we're going to see these two economies merge. We're about a half a percent of global wealth in crypto. Think of what I just said. One half of one percent of global wealth in crypto. That's going to be two, three, four percent in the next few years. And so this economy is only going to grow. As it gets there, though, the growing pains, uh, you've refer referenced them, you know, the potential for washouts. Just as you put together, for instance, an ETF, uh, wh wh how might some of those valuation corrections hit the retail market and that retail investor? So I think, listen, they're Bitcoin, Ethereum, they're both 80 vol instruments. 80 vol, that's a lot of volatility. I think over the next few years, volatility will go lower and lower. But right now, that's four times stock markets when stock markets are valuable. Uh, it's eight times currency markets. And so people's allocation should be made with that in mind. We expect volatility. Um, the really kind of frothiness that we're seeing right now isn't in Ethereum, isn't in Bitcoin, isn't in Coinbase. It's in smaller, you know, uh, they call them altcoins, smaller uh, tokenized communities. Dogecoin today rallied up to a $50 billion market cap. It re reminiscent of the GameStop thing. It is a meme coin. There's lots of young people on the Reddit chat rooms that love Doge. Both Elon Musk and Mark Cuban are are, are pumping it up. Um, it doesn't really have a purpose. Um, it, it's a, got a community, and maybe they can keep value there. I would be very, very, very worried if uh, one of my friends was investing in Dogecoin at these prices. And so I do think there's some pockets of retail froth. In speculative XRP, which is under investigation, uh, the parent company under investigation by the SEC, their coin went from 40 cents to a dollar 60 in a month. Um, doesn't make a lot of sense to me either. Uh, and so there is a retail frenzy. It's not really being seen in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Quite the opposite. Money's coming out of Bitcoin and Ethereum and moving into these other coins for more juice, for more excitement. Michael, we're seeing uh, Canada has been ahead of the U.S. in terms of um, regulatory allowances here. There is an ETF that allows investors now to essentially short Bitcoin. Is that going to bring, as we get more products like that, more, uh, uh, more calm or less volatility, do you think, to price movements? You know, I think it should bring uh, less volatility. And, and I say that because the more liquidity, the more people have easy access to make the bet they want to bet, you get price stability, right? You get price discovery. And so previously to short Bitcoin, you'd have to go out and find a borrow and, and sell it, which if you're a trader, not hard to do. But if you're a retail investor, almost impossible to do. And so this is giving the other side of the market a chance to express their view. So I think hats off to the to the group came up with that product. I wish our guys had thought of it first. Um, 
you know, I think, listen, the more, the more liquidity in the system, the better. Mm -hmm. Mike, you know, this is not the first hire, by the way, with Michael Daffy that you've made from Goldman Sachs. You know, a little bit earlier, I guess this year, was Damien Vanderwilt as well. Uh, you know, a little secret was, you know, a couple years ago, I used to find a lot of my banking sources in the crypto community because there were people who were working in the banks looking to leave. Do you think that there's something about talent that the banks are not getting that's attracting people away from them into firms like yours? Yeah, listen, this is a frontier industry. And so when you dream, you can dream big. Like what was interesting, forget the senior guys, right? I've known Michael Daffy for 30 years. Uh, he, he, had, he, he had a wonderful career at Goldman Sachs and he was ready to leap to, to the next chapter. What's more interesting to me is we're hiring 24, 25, 26 year olds from those same firms, from Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, JP Morgan, who are at the perfect part of their career for those banks. They'd gone to the right schools, they'd been trained well. And those, it's almost more painful for those banks to lose those guys than their senior people, right? Senior people always rotate out at one point, but it's the junior people that are the lifeblood of those banks. And those junior people are starting to say, hey, this is a cooler career. Uh, it's got more upside potential, certainly more risk, but it's got a lot more upside potential. And so we're seeing a migration of great talent. You know, one of the things that makes this space so interesting, Mike, and as you say, there's a lot of maturation ahead and in it, some opportunity and potentially some risk, uh, is the role the regulators will play. Do, are, are, do you think that, generally speaking, the regulators, and I'm going to include central banks and what they're thinking about their own version of a digital coin or cryptocurrency, uh, will they be a partner in this or will they actually be something you've got to figure out how to get around and over? I think, listen, you know, there's two, two sides to that coin. And Gary Gensler, when he was teaching at MIT, gave a really interesting talk on regulation. He said, well, a lot of innovation happens by small guys that the regulators let kind of get away with things. And you're seeing a ton of that in crypto. Uh, mm -hmm. And But the big guys got to play by the rules and work with the regulators. And, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, we're a big guy. Uh, and so we've always played by the rules and we are working with the regulators. I think Gary will be great as an SEC commissioner. I think he is smart. Uh, he wants to be perceived as smart and articulate, so he's not going to not answer things. And I think he'll lay out rules. He's already said Bitcoin and Ethereum aren't securities. That's a great start. Um, the big questions in, in crypto are really two. One is around decentralized finance. When I'm trading with someone in a, in a smart contract, do I need to know who's on the other side of that? Uh, right? We take the 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 approach right now unless you can have some way of high probability knowing you're not dealing with a bad actor you know we need to kyc that person that's going to get solved and i think the regulators are going to put some you know bumpers around or, or rail guards around that and the second really is um the, the same same theme it's you know bitcoin uh know your customer uh, on unhosted wallets versus hosted wallets, uh, how we think about peer-to-peer -peer transfer in general. And so that's really the, the big regulatory. Uh, I guess the third would be how we think about uh, securities offerings versus non-securities offerings, right? A lot of these token economies were launched in 2017, 2018. And you can go back, which, which they did with Ripple XRP and say, hey, that looked like a securities offering. And so now, you know, they're in trouble. Uh, there are a lot of other tokens out there that are probably sweating a little bit. And I think it'll help when we get a little more clarity around that. Mike, um, the Biden administration, China's rolling out a digital UN, and the Biden administration views that as a threat to the dollar. However, our uh, Bloomberg intelligence analyst, Mike McGlone, says Bitcoin actually enhances dollar dominance. And he talks talked to me this morning about the fact that Tether is a digital dollar with volume that's double Bitcoin. How do you view governments and their foray into digital currencies? I think it is a real threat to the dollar dominance that we don't have a bigger U.S. backed uh, stablecoin. We're going to, right? Facebook's uh, launching uh, hopefully in the next quarter or so. Uh, their diem coin, which is basically just a dollar wrapped in a coin. Uh, Circle and, and Coinbase have a have a coin called USDC, 
uh, which is a stable coin, which is growing like a weed. Um, you know, central bank issued digital currencies and sanctioned uh, by the central bank, I think are a major, major part of what we're going to see develop in the next few years. It's one of the reasons a lot of those are built on the Ethereum network, the, why Ethereum continues to go higher. Um, but if you let China dominate uh, the, those global payment platforms, you know, the, the dominance of the dollar is going to weaken, period. And, and Treasury knows that now. Politicians in the U.S. know that now. And so we're not turning back on that. Figuring out how to do it where you protect the privacy of your citizens versus what China's doing, uh, there's a lot of art in there. And so I think the U.S. is being really thoughtful on how it's approaching it. Most likely, you're going to allow private companies to run these things, but having the assets held at a you know, Federal Reserve sanctioned bank. Uh, that makes the most sense to me. And so there's a lot of nuance. I've been on the phone with uh, heads of central banks for four or five different countries in the last two months as they're all trying to figure out their version of what would be called a central bank issued digital currency. Have you talked with Treasury about helping them figure that out? You know, I haven't specifically, but our, our, our guys are in dialogue with some of the people on the, the lower tiers of Treasury. You know, when you have these Michael, turnovers... great to get some... I'm sorry. No, please go on. I Please believe when on. you have these turnovers in, 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 in uh, administrations, it takes a while for, you know, the new leaders. I mean, Gary Hensler literally just got put in put in, uh, in in front of his desk yesterday. Uh, it takes a while for the senior people to kind of get their hands around everything. But there's a lot of people in the working ranks of Treasury, SEC, OCC, that know a whole lot about the crypto economy, about blockchain, and about all these issues.